Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back, Brandon again. Today I wanna to talk about something that really affects all of us and that is missing training days. Now, when I was a younger lifter, this really used to bother me, both mentally to the point where it actually would bother me physically because I would really be down about my training and not being able to hit the gym. Now in my older age, I wouldn't say I'm an advanced lifter, but a more tenured lifter, I don't really let these missing of training days or even in some cases training weeks bother me as much. And the way I like to think about it is in an analogy form. So let's say for example, every time you go to the gym and train, that's like you're taking a dollar and depositing it in the bank and building up a savings account, if you will. Now over time, that savings account's going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. So let's take, for example, a novice or an intermediate lifter. Let's say you train four times per week, so that over the course of a full year, you may have deposited about $200. Now, if you miss training in that kind of circumstance, then yes, it'll probably have more of an impact because each dollar that you're unable to bank, so to say, has a bigger percentage of what your total potential earnings or savings account could be. But take someone who's been training for a couple years and has a larger account built up, that $1 a day really doesn't have as big of an impact, so it's not as relevant in that regard. So that's one of the ways that I really like to think about it. Someone like me who's been training for 20 plus years, every time I go and I put in a dollar just like you, but if I'm able to put in a dollar on a certain day, it has a very small impact on my overall savings account. Now again, that's not to say that training and missing training isn't something that's very important to me. I don't like to do it, but I just know mentally that it's not that big of a deal. And since I've been able to really accept that fact, I've really enjoyed training a lot more. And I don't mind as much when I miss training where I don't let it ruin my week or even potentially my training cycle because I'm thinking that I'm not gonna make progress, I'm not gonna make gains. And that's really been something that's been extremely helpful to me. Now, obviously, if you're in the case where you're in a prep for a contest or you're looking to test out, you have to look at both the long-term and short terms of things. So again, if you're banking a dollar a day and you're on a 12-week training cycle and you miss a whole week of training, that's a big percentage of potentially what you could be banking. Now, that's not to say that you still won't be able to cash out at the end of that training cycle, so to say, but your overall income or potential earnings is going to be less than it would be if you were able to put more time and effort in but that's where you can get creative with some of these things. So again, it's oftentimes the case with myself where I might typically train four days a week, but I'm traveling because of work or have family things going on, commitments where I can't train all my normal training days. In that aspect, I might look at my training protocols and try to see if I can bank some extra money on any particular day that I am able to train. So for instance, instead of banking a dollar a certain day, I might combine my squat and deadlift workouts from two days of training into one day, then try to bank $1.50, $1.75, or even $2 if I'm feeling really good. That way at the end of that training cycle or the end of the week, I still have the same potential earnings that I would if I were able to train on all days. Now speaking of this way where I'm talking $1.50 or $1.75, I kind of look at that the same way as I look at with getting injured or being sick meaning that I really take a look at if I'm able to fully cash in or bank that dollar that day if I'm not feeling my best. If I'm feeling really run down and feel like I can't actually push the numbers to where I'm supposed to and my training is gonna take a huge hit, I look at that as like I'm actually losing some money. I might have to withdraw some of that money from the bank if I decide to train that day. And in those circumstances, I probably won't train because again, I don't want to take any money out of what I've been saving. Now, if I feel okay, but maybe I'm just a little under the weather and I might have to cut training just a little bit short, but I'm still able to hit my main compounds, I might still train and I would just consider myself banking maybe 50 cents or 75 cents out of that dollar, but I'm still able to contribute to that overall fund. So I kind of try to weigh it that way. But in the long run, what I look at is if I'm able to get something out of that session, if I'm able to train, I will. But if I'm not, I know in the long run I have that savings account built up. And while in the short term it might take a little bit of a hit or a little bit of some extra effort to get back up to where I'm supposed to, I know that in the long run I will end up doing that. So since I've been able to accept that mentally, again, it's made training much more easy because I used to be the type to really worry about it and stress out about it. So much so, in fact, that mentally, it would start to take a toll on me physically, which is something we don't wanna do because again, that's like we're withdrawing funds from our account. So hopefully that analogy makes some sense to you if you're training or unable to get to the gym. Just know as long as you're consistent in the long run, you'll get to where you're going. It just might take some extra effort on your part. In the meantime, as always, thanks for watching and stay big. Thank you